So the last presentation for today is about CERCES II, the Center for Resilient Critical Infrastructures, with Henrik Sandberg at the Royal Institute of Technology. So CERCES II addresses security problems in industrial control and SCADA systems. Please. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, so I'm at KTH with the Decision and Control Systems Division. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background. So uh, this is uh, our response. There was a call in 2013 from MSB. And you can read here, this is from a quote from the, from the call text. It's in Swedish, unfortunately, only. It says that we, they want to look into the information security of industrial information and control systems. And they list some of the problems that are very common in, in the, those type of systems. For instance, it mentioned here that even if there are known IT flaws, vulnerabilities in the system, it often systems keep running for a long time because it's simply hard to upgrade IT in these critical infrastructures that we will see some more examples of. So that is kind of the, the background. So we were a team at KTH that put together a proposal and we were successful and uh, we formed Sources, which ran 2015 to 2020 and we got the opportunity to extend it for a few more years and we were very a lot of uh, good ideas, so we named it Sources 2, uh, and so we're up in that second phase right now. Uh, and so far, here are some of the people involved and in what we have generated so far. We have Mats Dam, who you just heard, who is leading one of the teams. He is a professor in teleinformatics. We have Ragnar Tobaden, who is associate professor in communication theory. We have George Dan over here professor in teletraffic theory and myself, then I'm a professor in automatic control. And during, up until now, we have six PhD students have graduated, and uh, I say three of them are at Ericsson Research now, one is at Scania, and two are still at KTH as postdocs, and we've had four postdocs through the project, and one is an associate professor in Eindhoven, and one is in Ankara. So I think we've had quite a good throughput of people in this project so far, and we still have some, some time to go. So, what are we talking about? Th this is a, a typical figure you see uh, on the IT infrastructure you have in a critical infrastructure. Uh, it's a layered infrastructure, uh, so the physics is here, the, the physical infrastructure. So what we're talking about is, for instance, the power grid, the national power grid. Uh, it could be a water distribution system, it could be a gas distribution, things like this. And uh, we have control stations, RTUs or PLCs, that locally measure and actuate on the infrastructure, controlling pressures or voltage levels, for instance. Um, these communicate now with operators in a control center over a control network, so this is a SCADA system. And that control center may also be connected to the corporate workplace. Hopefully there's lots of security in place, but unfortunately uh, often it's not. A lot of, uh, there, there's often a lot of uh, old equipment running here that is not so easy to maintain. So there's actually plenty of opportunities for attacks, and these phases here indicate uh, possible attack places in, in these infrastructures. And, uh, Given our backgrounds in the project, we cover sort of different uh, areas. So Mats is looking into embedded software platforms. So he's actually down here at the PLC level. Uh, Ragnar is more on the wireless side. So he's looking into wireless links that could be either here or here. And George is more looking into the communication infrastructure uh, uh, and how we can uh, route and uh, control the systems securely, so more in the control network, and I'm more in the control, looking into control infrastructure. So I'm more here on these loops, or also control loops over here. So that's roughly where we are. Um, so the research goals, uh, as we wrote in the application, is to explore new and emerging research results and their possible adoption in critical infrastructure and scalar domain. So area one is looking to highly trustworthy execution platforms using validation and verification tools, formal verification. 
Uh, we have in the wireless, we're looking into physical layer intrusion detection, both in practice and in, in uh, theory. Uh, if you go to the poster I have out here, there is an example of how we've done a practical implementation of, of this. Uh, and then we have area three, which is more about secure communication and computation infrastructure, virtualized control systems, time synchronization. And finally, uh, area four, where I work, uh, it's more about resilient control algorithms and cyber-physical anomaly detection and risk assessment. Uh, I was going to give you one uh, snapshot of, of, of our, our results. Uh, we have developed a virtual test bed uh, in the project. Uh, it was written in c sharps and it runs on standard IP networks, so you can basically implement it on, on laptops, uh, or you can also, we also run it in the FOE crates. So basically you deploy different, it's, it's a way to try to emulate these control infrastructures. So you have different uh, threads that simulate a human machine, human machine interface. There are uh, a loop stimulating a supervisor control network, one for the field communication network, there's a controller loops, and there's also a physical process. So it can be both actually you can connect it actually to a real physical test bed if you have one, or you can also do a simulation. Uh, and uh, the idea with this infrastructure is basically it's a way to, in real time, trying to simulate an attack, for instance, in the field communication networks, if you have a denial of service attack or a spoofing attack of data, how will that play out in the, in the uh, physical process? And how would that be seen from the controller side. Um, and it's available on GitHub if you're interested in that code. But I'll show you a little bit how it looks like. This is, for instance, the human machine interface uh, that you can uh, see. Here's the control of, of a water tank level. And here is, uh, you can set control parameters. You can display different anomaly. This is one particular anomaly detection scheme that is being deployed. It's a so-called QSUM test. And in fact, this is during a denial of service attack, where you can see that the alarm metric is going up here. So this is how the operator would see a denial of service attack. Uh, here is the controller module. Uh, it implements certain types of control strategies. Here is the classical one, the PID control, uh, which is the school book form. So if you've taken any control class, this is probably the controller you saw first. Uh, the problem with this one, it's, it's a continuous time formula, so if you want to implement this in a discrete, time-discrete system, you need to discretize it. And you can do that in many different ways. So you can do a simple time-triggered version, you can do a so-called PID+, Plus, which is done by Emerson, and we also developed our own implementation. So basically, it's a discretization rule. So you can, for instance, compare now these different implementations. So here you can see a test of these three, so basically this is now the physical data of, uh, of a system that is being denial of service attack at time five. So the system, the, the blue curves here are basically the process value, some physical water level. The red is basically the voltage applied to a pump and everything is working fine until time five. So basically you're controlling the water level according to some reference. And then on the denial of service attack sets in at five. And you can see here that the naive implementation is very bad. It's very sensitive to the denial of service attack. It starts to oscillate heavily. Whereas if you do a smarter implementation, you can actually, can, uh, can actually sustain quite good performance also in the presence of such attacks. Um, so that's just one example what you can use this, this, uh, this uh, testbed for, basically, to, to see what happens and also how the operators would... would uh, so, for instance, in, in uh, context of a risk assessment, a vulnerability assessment, I think this would be useful. Uh, yeah, again, here are the uh, people involved. Uh, Mats, who you saw, and George sitting over there, and Ragnar, you have to email if you want to talk to him, and I'm also here as well, so I'm happy also to take questions. The, session, the poster is out there, and uh, there's more snapshots of our work there. So thank you. <laughs>